Dallas Cowboys fan or Dallas Cowboys 51, uh, what will Dak's season look like stat-wise? I mean, hopefully awesome, right? I, I would actually like lower passing yards, which I attribute to, hey, you're winning games, you're grinding the clock out in the end. But honestly, with a 17-game season, 500 or 5,000 passing yards, very much in the range of outcomes here. I'd say around 65, 66% completion percentage, approaching 5,000 yards, probably 30 touchdowns. Hopefully the interceptions are somewhere like 9 or 10 in that range. Luis Hernandez, is there a UDFA that you want to keep an eye out for in the preseason? Um, from an investment standpoint, Brandon Smith, the rookie receiver from Iowa, got a pretty good signing bonus. I am intrigued by TJ Vasher's size, by the way. Other guys, I mean, Brendan Knox is a running back who I kind of like a little bit out of Marshall, just not a great athlete. He could maybe carve out a role there. Two other names then on defense, right, where it's kind of thin overall. Anthony Hines could be your next undrafted free agent linebacker, the team that the fans fall in love with. Tyler Coyle, safety from Purdue, really great athlete. Didn't play great for the Boilermakers, though, in 2020. That's the name to keep an eye out for as a potential practice squad guy in the end. From Denzel Maxey, who are the three biggest threats to the Cowboys in the NFC? Well, I mean, for starters, I, I, it's the Cowboys are, are playing catch-up to other NFC teams as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think the Bucks, of course, lead the way. Green Bay, if they have Aaron Rodgers. Rams, Seahawks, Niners, kind of all in that grouping. Then I put the Cowboys there. I think they are a top seven, top six team in the NFC. I think they win the division, but they are not the favorite as we sit right now. From Archie Manning, is Simi Fihoko going to compete for wide receiver four this year? Good question. So as things sit unquestionably in whatever order you want them to, it is Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and CeeDee Lamb. Those are your big three. I still think Cedric Wilson, as we sit right now, is the front runner to be wide receiver four. But Noah Brown played decent snaps last year. Then Simi Fehoko, I think long term, could be your wide receiver four or more. I liked him a lot as a developmental guy coming out of Stanford. So I think it's Wilson for now, but that could change in camp. There will be a competition. So pick a wide receiver four for me. Remember, Fehoko, the cheapest of this group, and that does matter for Catboy. Type in N for Noah Brown, C for Cedric Wilson, or S for Simi Fehoko. From Green Caesar 55 what a great username there. With the talks that Nishan Wright is impressing at camp, what is your confidence level after your meltdown when you selected him in, when we selected him in the draft? Uh, higher, I'll tell you that much, not that there's anywhere else to go but up there. It makes me feel a hell of a lot better. I, and, and frankly, Wright himself has said this. Let's see the pads come on. But if I was at like a, a zero when they took him, probably like a four or a five right now. So pretty good growth there. Hope I'm wrong. Hope he balls out. Can't wait to see him in the preseason and at camp. From Allen Williams the second, if we were to keep Galp, which I hope we do, how much would you pay him? It's a good question. Um... If he is going to command what I think his market is, I think at minimum, you're looking at like $13 million per year. I think, I think that that's like the low-end, still market value contract for Gallup right now. Higher end, probably like $17 million per year, somewhere in that range. If he takes way less, awesome. Not sure he's going to, though. From my burner account, of all the recent free agents pick up by the Cowboys, which one do you not see making the roster? The one name that really jumps out to me is the way his deal is structured, Carlos Watkins. If Quinn Bahana impresses as a run stopper early, then I think Watkins ends up being the odd man out. That's the name that I'm going to keep an eye out for this preseason. From Demboys88, who is our backup free safety behind DeMonte Casey? Is that player already on the roster? My initial response is, I hope he's not. Uh, two names right now. Darian Thompson. Yikes. And then maybe Israel Mukwamu. I, I could live with Mukwamu if he impresses. I don't want Darian Thompson. 
Meanwhile, Jerron Curse, I think it's probably going to be more of a, a strong safety backup right now. If you guys want to be on these mailbags, all of the questions come in from our live audience here at the Cowboys Report. So there's one way to get that notification for the live show. It's subscribing. Hit that big red button. That way you don't miss out on anything going on around America's team. From Israel M, who are some players we can target in next year's free agency? He says, Gil, uh, Stephon Gilmore slash and can sue if they don't get extended. Um, looking for being honest here, probably not a great group of guys that they're going to pursue. Cowboys will be a little bit tight on money. Catboy does not spend. I look forward to getting my hopes up for Jesse Bates, knowing it's never going to happen. But I think Sue's a decent name, actually. Veteran, older guy, not that expensive. We'll see, though, in terms of what ends up happening for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not getting them hopes up for a big name addition. It's not how they typically operate. But if Vaughn Miller's not back, you'll see his name linked. I pretty much promise you on that one. From Duke Fathers, who do you think is the most overpaid player currently on the roster? Good question. Um, I feel like many of... You guys might say to Marcus Lawrence, it's Jalen Smith. If Jalen Smith was, was on his it was on a, a first or on a rookie contract, we would not be nearly as negative on him as a fan base as we are. Because he's getting paid like top ten linebacker money, he's not pay, playing like one. It's Jalen Smith. That's that's a pretty easy answer for me. From Davi again, do you think a good fullback will increase Elliott's production? Um, if you had asked me this, like. Five years ago, I, my answer might have been yes. Maybe 10 years ago, absolutely, because we've seen that in the past with, like, LT, for example. In the modern NFL, not really. Now, it might help the ground game a little bit, but I think it would be a negative impact on the offense overall. It, it brings another guy in the box. The simplest way, folks, to reduce the number of stacked boxes, stacked boxes that, that you face Go multiple receivers. You go go if, if you go two tight ends, a linebacker's not coming off the field. So I think spreading things out and then running the football, actually the best way to increase your own production. If we don't get to your question, folks, again, I am on Twitter. Hit me up to chat cowboys, NFL, or whatever at what going downy. That Twitter link, by the way, in the comments section and in the description. From Dem Boys 88 how do you like Randy Gregory standing up on one side, Parsons on the other, with Lawrence with his normal hand down in the scheme? I think you're right here. I think this is the idea that I'm searching for, where in this scenario, as long as Tank Lawrence hand the dirt playing a defensive end technique role, and then you've basically got you know Parsons as a strong side linebacker, 4-3 under scheme, that's what I actually think this team is going to do. And if they do that, I'll be pretty pleased. I think that's a pretty good base package option for the Dallas Cowboys. Henry, what's our cap looking like? Uh, easily manipulable. It's always that way. The cap's good. They've got some money if they want some emergency rainy day money here. Um, if, if that ends up being the case, they're not going to spend because they never do, but the cap is just fine right now for Dallas. Don't let anyone tell you they're in cap hell because they're not. From Juan Ramos, do you see Reggie Robinson making the team? Seems he's been uh, impressive in camp. I think he has a chance. Um, I, I, I don't know if, if, if he's going to. He's going to have to earn it because he's got to beat out Maurice Kennedy and others. If the Cowboys go deep at corner, he makes the team. If not, it mm, be a big disappointment. I think if I had to guess, though, I, I really want to say yes. From Mendoza, bring back the GOAT, Jameez Lawali. I mean, I think his career's over. Uh, didn't play at all last year, opted out, got cut like in March or something. I kind of think his career's over. So I know you're kind of memeing there, but mm, it, 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 it's over, folks. So predict the Cowboys record now for me in 2021. Get your votes in for me right now in the comment section. Remember, 17-game schedule, so no 10-6. Go 11 and 6 or 10 and 7. Get your votes in right now. From Henry, if we ran diamond in the backfield like Baltimore, who would you 
it's like back there. I assume you mean like a, a, a full house formation. Um, which means you're probably going to have to make a tight end to one of those guys back there. Maybe Sean McEwen. Maybe you get greedy and try Shaul on Lua in that role. But it's Zeke and Pollard back there too. Um, frankly, I don't wonder that for the Cowboys because I've got three great receivers. I want them on the field. From Rambo, bring back the GOAT Dez for his last years. Let him retire as a Cowboy. Look, you can let Dez retire as a Cowboy, but what role is he going to do? Like, this is why the Dez stuff doesn't actually make sense. At best, at best, he is a number four receiver, and frankly, might be wide receiver five on this team right now, who offers you nothing on special teams. I, I don't have a role for that guy. Noah Brown, Cedric Wilson, they're young, they're cheap, and they help me on special teams. Simi Fehoko, guess what? He's a draft pick. He's young and cheap. Honestly, I wouldn't cut any of those guys to get Des Bryant on this team. Plain and simple there. TJ Savage, who can surprise us and beat the Cowboys on our schedule. I mean, to some extent, everybody, right? You know, maybe the Giants end up being better this year. Maybe that's an outcome. And they, they beat you last year, too. So, Every there are no cupcake games this year. You go six and ten, you've lost that right. Football fanatic Jarwin or Schultz? Yes, um, it's a great question. In all seriousness, um, I don't know, man. Uh, I think maybe a bit of both. If Jarwin's healthy, I still think the Cowboys end up giving him the first chance and the first opportunity in order in order to to do that. But we'll see who ends up playing the most snaps in the end.